my name is Melissa Fry, author, editor, and creator of the Confident Writer Intensive. Today we're going to be talking about writer's block. Yes, it's a very scary subject for some people, but I'm going to give you my 10 best tips on how to work through writer's block so it does not have to hold you back on writing your book. Let's get started. believe the words that are already inside you just waiting to come out. So you are not trying to come up with these words. You are not trying to materialize them from somewhere. You are merely just trying to bring them out from inside you. They're already inside you. You already have everything you need. So just believe that they are already there and you are just allowing yourself to be the conduit that allows them to come out. Number two, you need to put a plan in place. Make it specific and realistic, but put a plan in place for your writing. This could look like a lot of different things, and we've talked about this on this channel before, but basically this is just getting a plan together so that you have certain commitments that you make to yourself to write your book, whether it's half an hour every morning before you get ready for the day, or two hours after you put the kids to bed, or an hour on your lunch break, whatever it is, make a plan and stick to it. And of course, give yourself grace if you don't hit every single day. Just get back onto it the next day and keep going. Number three, listen to your intuition. What do you really want to write next? If you are convinced that, no, I have to power through this manuscript, I've got to get this done, I've got to X, Y, Z, whatever it is, you might be harming yourself and you might be working yourself into a writer's block without even meaning to. Yes, sometimes we have deadlines, and yes, sometimes we need to just concentrate and focus and get the things done we need to do. Sometimes parts of the writing process are not as fun for us and we don't really want to do them. I'm looking at you editing, but <laughs> they're all necessary and important. However, if you are just stuck on a manuscript and you can't seem to make it work and you don't know what's going on, maybe take a break and start a new one or work on one that you've already started and you've kind of let sit for a minute. Basically, follow where the muse takes you. This might be a good way to just help you get unstuck and you really don't have to just stick to one manuscript at a time. Some writers do and some writers choose not to. It's really up to what feels most natural to you. Number four, promise yourself rewards and then give them to yourself. So if you make progress on your book, whatever, however you want to measure that, whatever progress is significant to you, once you make that progress, pat yourself on the back, give yourself a piece of chocolate or uh, one hour of your favorite Netflix show or a night out with your husband, whatever it is, make sure that you make those rewards and then make good on them. Keep those promises to yourself because then they will be more effective when you go to do it again. It's just a great way to incentivize yourself to get things done. Number five, trust that your words will come when they are ready. Now this can be a hard one. And yes, again, I know there can be deadlines and things you need to get done, but you also have to trust that the words that need to be said will come in the right time when they need to be said. So if you're really fighting to get those words on the page and you don't know why and it's just not working, like I said, try a different manuscript, try something else, but trust that if this book that you were given to write is meant to be out into the world, the timing will come in its perfect time. You can't rush the process, you can't force it. Otherwise, you are not going to have your best book out into the world. So sometimes you just need to take a break. Sometimes you just need to step away and that's okay. Again, as long as there's no deadlines, but you might just need to say, hey, I'm not going to release a book in June. I'm going to release it in July and that's okay. As long as that's fine and you don't have a publisher breathing down your neck and you control the process if you're self-published or indie publisher, just roll with it. Allow the things to come when they come. You never know what the timing of something might affect something else. Maybe if you released it in June, it wouldn't do as well as if you released it in July. And sometimes those things that we think are writer's block that are stopping us from doing things, sometimes they're for our best good. So trust the process. 
Number six, if you're experiencing writer's block, sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes you just need to sit down and write. Plain and simple. Sometimes you're just making up excuses of why you can't write, and you're just finding everything, every reason to not open up your manuscript and not start typing. Now you will know if this is you. You will know. Really, sometimes you have to go deep down inside and sometimes you have to get a little real with yourself and that can be a little painful. But honestly, you will know if you're just being lazy and you just want to have to sit down and write it. Sometimes a little discipline is needed. But there is a caveat and we'll address that in number seven. Number seven, don't fight the words. You need to take breaks as needed. We talked about this a little bit and yes, sometimes you do need to just sit down and write, but sometimes when you sit down to write and you start trying to type and you're just like, okay, this is not working. Again, you'll know deep down inside if you're truly being honest with yourself, if it's actually working or if you're just really like itching to, I have to go do something else because XYZ excuse. So don't fight the words, allow them to flow, allow them to be there. And this is also an important note that when you haven't been writing for a while, because this has been me, sometimes the words come a little bit more slowly. That's to be expected. It's going to take you a few sessions or more to get it back into the groove of things. So don't sit down after not writing for months and expect to write 10,000 words in a day. It's just probably not going to happen. But sometimes there is that initial push that you have to push past those blocks initially once you start writing again. But if you get into a consistent writing habit, I promise you it will get easier. Number eight, look at your writing space and your writing routine and adjust as needed. Sometimes your environment is what's holding you back. Sometimes you might have a TV on in the background and it's very distracting. Sometimes you just need to turn on one of those blocks that won't allow you to visit Instagram or Facebook in your browser. Whatever it is that helps you, that helps you focus and concentrate to help get you in that writing mood, make those adjustments. For me, I need a oh, cup of water by me and I need a good playlist. That really helps me get in, in, the, in the mode, in, in the mood to write. So, but look at your routine. Sometimes there's something that if you are really stressed out and you go to write, it might not flow as well for you. So maybe you need to do a couple of cleansing breaths before you start writing. Um, I've heard of people that they like to pray before they write. Sometimes it's, maybe you need to clear your mind. Maybe you need to get hyped up with the music, maybe whatever, fill in the blank, whatever works for you to help you get in that writing mood, to help your environment be a place of creativity. So maybe you need to be in front of a window or uh, have a lot of encouraging decor around you, whatever it is. Analyze your writing routine and your writing space to make sure that it is benefiting you and your writing. Number nine, try what I call a joy first experiment. Now my coach suggested something like this and I loved it. I thought it was a great way to do it. And it helped me to actually write over 100,000 words in less than two months. So it was so much fun. I love doing it. And here's how it works. The joy first experiment is basically before you do anything else for the day, before you do any other work for the day. And now a lot of us work from home. So this might actually make a lot more sense. Before you do anything else, work on your book. Instead of using it as a system, which I had been doing where I got my work done for the day and if I got all my work done, then I could write. I used it first as kind of a reward for myself up front. And I said, no, I'm going to write because this is a priority. And so I wrote until it felt natural or you could write for an hour or when you need to go get breakfast or whatever it is. Write first and then go about your day and see how it changes. For me, it was such a motivation, inspiration that every day I knew that I was going to be writing. Some people look do this as a 5.30 a.m. experiment. I did not do it that early. <laughs> Some people like to do it first thing. Some people like to, you know, whatever it is, whatever makes sense to you. Maybe your joy first experiment is simply when the kids go to bed, I'm going to write first before I do the laundry or before I do this or whatever it is. Whatever your designated time, make the writing a priority. Put that joy of writing 
first and then see how your writing life changes. And number 10, write every day. Okay, caveat, <laughs> because I've already mentioned this. Some days you just, the writing's not coming, it's not gonna work, but address your manuscript just about every day. The reason I say that sometimes it's not going to work and there will be days that you skip, that seems counterintuitive, right? Because you're like, oh no, it has to be every single day. No, your goal, your mission is to write every single day. However, you have to give yourself grace. Some days the writing is just not flowing. Maybe you're sick. Maybe your kid is not feeling well and you have to take care of them. Maybe X, Y, Z. You will know if it's an excuse or an actual valid reason for you to step away from writing for a day, maybe two, but know that you always get back to it. And the reason that you don't wanna stick so strictly to every single day is when you miss a day, then you get frustrated and you say, well, what's the point and you give up. If you commit to writing every day, but then you miss a day, you're like, you know what? I, today was what it was. I'm not gonna worry about it, I'm gonna get back to it tomorrow. And that's the way to make significant progress. Even in my Joy First experiment that I talked about a little bit ago, and I committed to writing every single day, there was a day I wrote three words, there was a day that I just didn't write at all because I knew it wasn't coming, but I still got back to it the next day. I still kept that commitment to myself. I didn't look at it as breaking the commitment. I look at it as, you know what? My self-care for my peace of mind, all of that, I needed that break. And then I got right back to it the next day. If you are struggling with writer's block, I have a great thing to tell you about the Confident Writer Intensive. It is a live 12 week program that starts the week of April 5th. We are going to be working on things just like writer's block. We're going to be going through the process of figuring out what our blocks are, what is holding us back from writing. We're going to work through all of that. We're going to learn writing craft tips. We're going to have a community where we can get real time feedback and talk to each other, discuss our projects and our blocks and our stories. We're going to do some writing sprints and have some critiques and just have a welcoming, positive community where we can learn, build each other up, and finally make progress on our books. It's going to be so much fun and I'm super excited. So right now, early bird pricing is live until Sunday, but early bird pricing is $500 off the full price. So it's a great deal. If you're looking to get in and make progress on your book and you really just can't figure out what's holding you back, now's the time to join. So reach out to me, check out the link below for more information and then send me an email, send me a DM, wherever, and we can get you in that program because it will help you make progress on your book and it will transform your writing life. It's not just for the one time for this one manuscript. It will teach you things that you will be able to take into every book that you write and it'll help you improve your writing life, improve your knowledge of the writing craft and really transform your writing career. I really believe that. So check out the link below for more information on that and I look forward to hearing from you. All right, well that was my 10 best tips for getting past writer's block. Hopefully you learned a lot and you've got some tools to apply to help you get past those blocks, those things that are holding you back. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment below if you have any questions at all or other tips that I did not include that you do so that we can all learn from each other. And do not forget to subscribe to my channel. My name is Melissa Fry. I'm an author, editor, and creator of the Confident Writer Intensive. I'll see you all next week. Bye.